Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the ZX9R. Now, um, obviously if you've seen the previous two videos you know exactly where we are now because um, you've, you've been following from the beginning. If not, go back and check them out and you'll see what's taken us to this stage. Um, but what we're going to be doing in this particular episode is I intend to drain the oil, drain the coolant and at least get the carburetors off. Um, get the carburetors off, get them on the bench, um, then we'll be getting ultra, ultrasonically cleaned um, later on. I'm not going to do that in, in this episode. Um, but what I want to do is I do want to do this in a particular order because there are cooling lines that run through the carburetors for, for carb heating purposes. Um, and what I want to obviously do is drain the coolant before I take the carbs off. Um, I mean, you don't need to drain the coolant to remove the carbs. You can actually just clamp the, the hoses. Um, but I'm draining it anyway, so I may as well do that first and then save myself the hassle. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get the coolant uh, drained out of the bike. Okay, on the uh, on the C model, and I believe it's the same on the E and the F models, the drain for the coolant is here on the water pump, just this little bolt here. And there's one there, and there's also another bolt on the front of the block. Oh, well, on the front of the, uh, yeah, on the front of the block, um, just here to drain, to drain the, uh, the remaining coolant out of the engine. Um, so that one comes out as well, but we'll drain this one first. Now, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to take the, cap off the radiator um, radiator is actually full looks a bit rusty doesn't look too clever um, I'll probably replace that um, and then what we'll do is remove the uh, remove the drain plug As you can see, that doesn't look a particularly nice colour. In fact, it actually smells disgusting. So we'll allow all that to, to drain out. In fact, there's what looks to be lime scale in that as well. So I would imagine somebody at some point has probably used tap water instead of um, instead of distilled water like you should. I can't say I'm surprised on this bike though. I think we're pretty much there. Now, let me get comfy, because the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to take the bottom hose off the expansion reservoir and obviously drain that out as well. really odd. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to come out of there. It could be that there's a bit of a lock, like a, like a vapour lock inside. Let me see if this makes a difference. You would think they're taking the lid off, but it could be that it's completely gummed up with rubbish. In which case, what I'll do is I'll just remove the two screws and tip it out. This hose doesn't want to come off. Ah, there we go. 
there's the uh, reservoir vent hose. I'll just leave that in there for now, actually. Yeah, that, that should be draining out. There's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't be, as you can see. Um, I think that's got, I think that's absolutely bung solid with something. So I'll just undo the screws and I'll tip it out in a minute. Um, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosely refit the drain plug, only so that I don't lose it, because it's very small. I'm not gonna tighten it though. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the uh, the drain on the front of the block. So here we go. All we need to do is just crack these off. Obviously both of these um, little drain plugs have got a little washer behind them. And nothing's coming out. Again, that could be that there's nothing in there, but more than likely it's because there's a blockage somewhere. There's the little, um, there's a little washer. This is an aluminium one. Aluminium ones aren't reusable, they're to be thrown away. Obviously a copper one, you can just anneal it and use them again if you wish, if, um, if you're uh, that way inclined. Right, I'm content that it's empty. All I need to do is obviously take them two screws out and I'll drain that out in there. But what we'll do now is we'll move on to removal of the carburetors. Yeah, there's oil in there. Yeah, you see, that's the reason why it wasn't emptying out because it's completely blocked, probably with gummy oil. Uh, oh, and look at that. Yummy. Looks like we've got tripe. <laughs> tripe in our uh, coolant bottle. Um, I mean, the bottle itself looks fairly serviceable, though that'll uh, that'll sort out with a good clean. Um, yeah, I think we'll be fine with that. Right. Anyway, as I said before, let's move on to the carbs. Right then, carburetors. Okay, where we want to start then is the fuel feed from the pump. Um, that clip obviously should be securing that hose to this T piece. Um, previous owner has kindly done me the honour of doing that for me, which is really, really kind of him. Saves me a bit of time. Um, but that will uh, now should pull off. Again, that's absolutely cranked. I think I'm going to need a, a tool on that to get that off. So I'll pull that off. Um, another thing we need to disconnect. I'm not even sure what that is off the top of my head. That's come off the that's come off the bottom of the airbox. Right. <laughs> um, throttle position sensor on the right hand side of the bank of carbs. We'll disconnect the plug for that. Um, then we need to disconnect the coolant hoses as we discussed before, which uh, there's one on each side. go so on this side yep all right now the vent pipe we'll um, disconnect that that one's a bit stiffer through this hole and there we go that goes up to the two air intakes in the front and there was um, the hosing that connected to it um, which is on here as you can see that's what the other end of it went on to just there okay so now 
Um, the only things I've got connected now, oh, obviously is the fuel line, I'll get off in a moment, is the throttle cables. Now, the throttle cable um, should be just a case of winding them in as far as we can to get plenty of slack on the cable and given a bit of luck we may be able to get them off one year i'm not sure we're going to get enough slack on these but i can obviously mess around with them afterwards a bit of slack there a bit of slack there yeah well I'll do when we get the um, carbs off um then we'll we'll look at that um, afterwards same with the uh, the choke cable obviously the choke is just in here and it goes into this this section here and what we need to do there's enough slack in this actually I can just unhook it from there like that and then it's just a case of twisting around and then wiggling around place and then that's that one out of the way. That one, that one's fairly straightforward and easy. Right, what I'll do, I'll grab a screwdriver and I'll I'll just pry it in there and get that off. I'm not too concerned about damaging the pipe because it's knackered anyway. We're uh, we're in a position now to um, undo the clamps on the uh, the inlet rubbers from the carburetors. Uh, as you can see, I've got the uh, fuel hose off and it's absolutely destroyed. It's rubbish that needs replacing. Um, yeah, it was like as I said, the, the the clamp wasn't even on there, so the previous owners um, obviously had it off at some point and not put it back on probably. Anyway, right. So the inlet rubbers, there's basically a large jubilee clip on each one, and the, the best way to get into it was with a long screwdriver like this, um, and it's just simply a case of undoing each one. That's the first one, and the second one is just underneath the choke linkage. So it's a little bit harder to get into. There's two. The other two are pointing this way. Make them nice and loose. And they won't interfere. That's all for right now. We should be able to wiggle them off. And there we go. Right, what we what have we missed? Um, right, there's yeah, there's another coolant hose which I did miss, which is just down here. disconnected the wrong one as it goes actually disconnected the wrong one there we go so that's them disconnected that is the uh, idle control. It should sit in a little bracket down here somewhere, but I don't think it actually was. I think it was actually just sitting loose. Didn't seem to be uh, connected to a bracket. There is supposed to be one down here. I think it's, I think it's supposed to be in that, that little bracket down there. I think that's where it's supposed to sit. Um, obviously I'd have to check the manual to be sure, but it definitely wasn't. Okay, what I need to do now is, um, obviously I need to, get these cables off and I'm not sure that I've got enough free play in them to, to be able to do it. So I may have to um, disconnect them at the, uh, at the throttle end. Uh, either way, I'll get them off, but I won't bore you with that. I'll um, get them off, get them on the bench and then we'll move on. Here we are, as you can see, throttle cables removed. The easiest way I found to do it was to just remove the housing from the throttle grip which uh, again I did discover was covered in this horrible fake carbon fibre rubbish again. Um, once I uh, once I took that off obviously you can just you can just unhook these from this end it's dead easy and then I had plenty of free play in the cable to unhook them from this end so 
yeah, drop down, that's the carburetors off. I'll get these uh, set to one side. These cables will obviously be replaced with, um, with brand new ones. Um, and uh, yeah, we can move on now. The other thing I wanted to get done today is um, I want to drop the oil. Um, now, obviously with the engine coming out, there's a few things I want to do um, prior to actually removing the engine because it'll just be easier with the engine in the frame. Um, and we're talking about things like the, the clutch basket, um, the rotor for the, for the charging system, all of that sort of stuff. Those, those massive, really, really tight nuts will be far easier to get off with the engine in the frame. Anyone who's ever tried to take them off on, a, on, a, on an engine on a bench, it, it's, it's an absolute pig. So um, obviously, you know, you can get holding tools, but it's just easy, easier, I find, in my personal opinion, to do it while it's, while it's in the frame. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to drain the oil, because obviously when I take the, the two side covers off, I'll lose a bit anyway. Um, but obviously the oil's coming out because the engine's getting pulled apart. So um, that's what I'm going to do next. What I'll go and do is I'll drain the, uh, the crappy old antifreeze into, uh, into my antifreeze container and then uh, give it a quick clean out and then we're, uh, we're good to use it for the oil. Right, so here we are underneath the bike. Drain plug just here, 17 mil. So I'll whip that off. Obviously the oil filter, I'm going to leave the oil filter on for now. I'll, I'll whip that off once it's on the bench. There's no need to, uh, there's no need to do that down here. So here we go, let's... That was, fr that was pretty tight. Tighter than it needed to be, that's for sure. I tell you what, that oil is actually a lovely clean colour. That's really, really surprising. That's actually really, really nice looking oil. Um, it doesn't look that old. Uh, well, I say old. It is old because I've owned this bike for two years now. It's been this is a this is a project which has been two years in the making, um, and it hasn't had an oil change obviously in my ownership. But I'm guessing just before sale, the guy changed the oil. Um, probably the only thing he did do. Uh, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, but when you consider, the oil looks like that, yet the oil filter doesn't look new. Now this bike hasn't done any mileage in my ownership. It literally came home with me when in my garage, but that, that oil filter doesn't look new. Um, so yeah, it does make you wonder. So obviously what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let that drain out um, and then uh, I'm gonna stand up and then we'll, uh, We'll wrap this episode up. Okay, so while the uh, last of the oil draining out, making a nice little peeing noise on the floor there. Um, obviously, we're uh, you know we're moving forward with this project. I think the next episode is going to be a case of removing the cooling system because the radiator is now empty or as empty as it's going to get. Disconnect all the coolant hoses, take that radiator off. That radiator looks scrapped to me, so I need a new one. Whether I'm going to be able to get an OE one is unlikely. I'll probably have to go for a pattern part on that because I think even if I could get an OE one from somewhere like Fowler's or something, which I probably can, it would be probably as much as I paid for this bike, and I'm not certain, I'm certainly not putting all of that money into what into one part. So yeah, I'll, I'll have a look around um, and see what I can find. On a, on a positive note, however, I did. Um, I managed to pick up a headlight for this um, from a guy who was actually breaking um, a ZX6R, uh, the same, you know, the same shape ZX6R, um, the, the headlights are identical in every way. Um, and we got it for, I think it was £40 delivered, which I think was a, was a bit of a steal. And it looks absolutely immaculate. It's got all the, all the brackets, all the, all the, um, the mountains are intact and everything. So um, I'm, a bit, I'm quite pleased with that. And hopefully when it arrives, um, it looks as good as it did in the pictures. Right guys, anyway, um, I've waffled on enough. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this, this, uh, this video and I will see you all again for the next one where we, uh, we continue the teardown of the, uh, the ZX9R. Take care guys, bye bye now.